VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. And hello, everybody. Welcome to another live user training on a Wednesday. My name is Liron Segev. I am the Director of Customer Success here at VidIQ which essentially means that I help you as creators, regardless of your size, whether you're small or whether you're huge, level up your channel, get to that next level. Whether it's about strategy, thumbnails, titles, research, it's all about understanding how YouTube works and understanding how it can help you grow on your own channel. Today, there is no theory. Today, it's all practical. It's a step-by-step -step instruction of everything that needs to happen for you to grow your channel. So I've been speaking to some people and um, before we went live on the on the chat, we got people from around the world. This is live, we're here for you. Um, there was one disclaimer I made a little bit earlier on, which is the weather disclaimer. I live in Texas and there's currently tornado warnings, hail, um, storms are coming. So that knocked us off of the stream or almost knocked us off the stream last week. So today, hopefully, things are going to be a lot calmer. Although looking outside, yeah, let's, 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 not, let's not jinx it. So if we can kind of hold together and we kind of power through this, I think we will be, we will be fine. Um, if you've got a question in the chat, start with the hashtag question. Hashtag question, then Rob and our other moderators will be able to pick that out from the lots of chat that are going up and down here be able to drag that and then kind of answer your question in case we miss anything. A um, couple of FYIs, Tuesdays is when we do channel audits on the vidIQ channel. So that's when you submit your channel and then we review it. If, if it gets selected, we review it online with everybody to go through that. That's Tuesday. Wednesday, today we're doing the practical how to do YouTube better, how to rank your videos. And then on Thursday, we do live Q&A. So that's when you can kind of log in, you ask us a whole bunch of questions, you fill in the form, and then there's a bunch of us online and we kind of go through it and give you those answers. So today's not channel audit, so sorry if you're here for that. That's not what we're doing today. We've got a lot of work to get to kind of cover through. So we're just gonna kind of start it, start and plow and go straight, straight through this. Okay, so let me ask you a question and this is where I always like to begin. Every YouTube journey begins in this place. Everybody think of your kitchen. No, I'm not kidding. Think of your kitchen. If you went to your kitchen right now and you just dragged a whole bunch of stuff from the cupboard, random stuff from the top cupboard, the middle cupboard, the bottom cupboard, stuck it in a bowl, mixed it all up, threw it in the oven. What are the odds of chocolate cake kind of coming out of that? We can all agree, fairly none. And yet when we do YouTube, we do it exactly that way. What we do is we go out there, we form a whole bunch of stuff, we have hours of footage on our SD card, memory cards, come home, edit, throw together a title, throw it online and go, oh, I hope this works. So this is not a good approach to doing chocolate cake and certainly not a good approach to getting your YouTube working. If I tell you, don't go to your kitchen and throw random stuff into a bowl, here is a recipe. I need you to get this ingredients, I need you to mix it in this way, I need you to put it into this oven in this temperature. What are the odds of chocolate cake coming out? Much, much better. Same with YouTube. If you follow the recipe, if you follow a process, things start to change. So if there's one thing I want you to take away from today, if only one thing you're gonna take away because you're gonna snooze the rest of this, that's fine. Take this little nugget of information. Do your research first before you pick up a camera before you touch this device make sure you do your research first why is that well YouTube is a search engine I'm gonna repeat that many times today YouTube is a search engine what do you do on the search engine you su do submit questions you submit search queries what is YouTube's job is to marry your search with a video that's gonna answer that question it's gonna answer that query you have a much better chance of succeeding on YouTube if you're going to be answering a question, if you're going to be marrying your video with a search that's already being done. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Because remember, YouTube is divided into three Ds. The first D is for discoverability. You need to be discovered. If you have the most amazing content that nobody knows about, that's pointless. You need to feed YouTube, feed the beast, so it knows who you are and it can direct views to you. So the first D is for discoverability. 
The second D is for deliverability. I still don't know if that's a word. I say this every week and I still never looked it up. Deliverability means are you delivering? In other words, you have a viewer watching your video. Are you delivering them value from your video? Did you clickbait? Did you get them to come out here because it was yet another PewDiePie versus T-Series video in your title, but your, ta but your video is all about cooking, for example? Well, they're going to leave. So you're not delivering value. Therefore, YouTube is not going to promote you. But if you are delivering, you are bringing value, guess what it unlocks? Unlocks the last D, which is distribution. This is where YouTube loves your video and says, wow, if these bunch of people watched and they watched for a long time, I'm going to try new people and I'm going to start distributing this wider and wider and wider, which is where you build your audience. So the first D, you've got to be discovered. Otherwise, none of the other things mattered. If nobody finds your video, that's the problem. And that is where we're going to start right now. So if you're ready, I'm going to switch my screen over to this browser window. And it all starts, guess what? At the, at the YouTube search box. Let's talk chocolate, chocolate cake. If I was making a chocolate, uh, if I was making a chocolate cake video, the first thing I would do is I would put the big keywords into my browser. And what I'm looking for, I don't care about the results here yet. The only one thing I'm looking for is this. On the right hand side, you'll see something called the vidIQ search volume. That's the first thing I look at. Why? Because if it's right now, you can see it's sitting kind of towards the right hand side. It's kind of in the green, which means lots of people are searching. If it was in the red all the way onto the left hand side, it means that people are not searching for this topic. If people are not searching for this topic, what's the point of making a video about a topic nobody cares about, right? So the first thing I want to see is search volume. So I put my keywords in and I'm looking at search volume. But then before I rush out and make a video, look at the second option. It's called the vidIQ competition score. What does that mean? Just so there's lots of people searching, but are there lots of people competing for that keyword? Lots of people making chocolate cake videos. Well, in this case, look at that. It's in the red, which means lots of searches, but lots and lots and lots of competition. So already I know I'm going to have a tough time where I'm competing against these people. In fact, look, the highest view video is 41 million views. How am I supposed to compete with that? So already I know I haven't picked up my camera, but already I know that a chocolate cake video just by itself, we're going to have a problem. So what do you do? Tip number one. Check this out. This is pretty cool. It's called the autocomplete test tip. Essentially, you're doing the alphabet walkthrough. You go to your chocolate cake, you press space, and then you go A. B, C, D, E. What is this? What's coming up? What's coming out is the autocomplete. Essentially, remember what I said? YouTube is a search engine, which means that people are searching for chocolate cake eating, chocolate cake easy recipe. Look at that, that third one. Chocolate cake easy recipe. Enough people have typed it into the search bar that YouTube has said, wow, I'm going to make it easier for the next person by already auto completing that, helping you complete that search query so you don't have to type the whole thing on the keyboard. How does it help us as creators? Well, these are titles for our videos. This is starting to home in what our video content should be like. So let me show you what I mean. Look at this chocolate cake in a mug, chocolate cake in microwave, in a pressure cooker. I'm not sure I would want to see that. But chocolate cake in a mug. How cool is that of a title? Now I know I have picked up my camera. I'm not going to film chocolate cake video in my kitchen. I'm just making it. I'm going to film it chocolate cake in a mug in a microwave, hitting two keywords at the same time. You see how pinpoint accuracy that starts to become. And I know I'm going to get some views. I know I'm going to get eyeballs on my video because people are searching for this right now. So I'm able to and I'm able to get that information, marry that up to a video that I'll make. But wait, there is more. Remember, YouTube is a search engine. What do you do with search engines? You ask questions. So don't forget, go to the beginning of the keyword and type how. How chocolate cake is made. Oops, let me move that out the way. Right. Where? Where's my chocolate cake? 
Why chocolate cake cracks? Oh, there we go. Look at that beautiful title. Why chocolate cake cracks? If you're in the cooking industry and this is your thing, I would make a video specifically with that title because people are already looking for that, right? So who, what, when, where, how, why? Remember, they're not always going to come up. It's not always going to fit that mold. So if you don't have a, I think something like when, yeah. When's chocolate cake? Apparently is a stupid question because chocolate cake, there's no specific time. Any time's fine. So nobody's made a video about that. Well, is there an opportunity perhaps to do something there? So this is how you use it. The ABC walkthrough at the end, and then the beginning, the what, where, when, how, why, who, question marks, question words, which are going to give you those titles. Does this make sense? Let me know. Give it a thumbs up in the chat because that's the only thing I can barely see from the corner of my eye here. Give it a thumbs up if I have, haven't lost you guys and that makes sense and you can see how you can use this for your own for your own content. By the way, this will work for everything. So this is going to be Windows 10, right? Let's just say Windows 10. Is that still a thing? So I'm going to go Windows 10 A, B, C, D. Look how many titles this is already just throws up at me all the time, all the time. What else can we do? Someone was doing gaming. So... Let's just do Fortnite. If you had to do Fortnite, you'll be dead. But look at this. Oh, Fortnite cake. Talk about marrying two worlds together, right? Fortnite A. Right. Avengers animation. Right. B. C. D. E. Look how I'm using um, YouTube's own algorithm. Thank you, for, um, Dala, for, say, for giving us to say a thumbs up. So you're, you're with us. Um, look how I'm using this to give me that information. And if at the beginning, I could go to the beginning of that and say, who, where, when. Look how easy that is. It's feeding you titles that you people are searching for. Why wouldn't you make a video answering those questions? That is how you get that immediate attention. Stick Mobility says thumbs up. Um, Rishi Devan, Devan says thumbs up as well. Cool. Everybody is on track. Okay. So now we know what to look for. But check this out. There is still more. I've always wanted to say that. All right, let's just go into this video and let's wait for this thing to load. I'm going to pause that. Great. Let's look at this video and we're going to see this video has 15.4 million views. Now, that is how most of us look at a video and say, is this a good or a bad video? If it's got millions of views, it must be good. If it's got a bad, um, a low number of views, well, it can't be that, that great video, right? We measure views as a barometer of success of this particular video. Well, that's not the best way. Here's why. Um, anybody here on, on the chat remember when the iPhone 4 came out or the Galaxy S2 or Windows 95? Any of those um, operating systems? Any of those phones? Any of those gadgets? Well, at the time that they came out, those videos must have got millions and millions of views, right? The question is, how many people are searching right now, today, for the iPhone 4 or for Windows 95? Not many, because it's no longer relevant. So we look at something very different. We look at something called views per hour. Can you see that? Views per hour for us is gold. What does that mean? It means that currently on this video, 757 views per hour are, is happening, which means people are right now looking at this video. They're watching this video today. That's what's make it relevant. Not the number of views, the total number of views. It's what this is how I understand this exposes this information to show me that, wow, this is still a relevant topic in 2019. And there's another one. Look here, there's something called historical. Click on that and look at that graph. That graph is going up, up and to the right, as we like to say here. So which means what? which means it's still trending, which means it's still a topic, which means people are still interested. If it was going down the other way, you why would you make a video about something that nobody cares about? This gives you all the indication that you are on the right track with what you're looking for. So this video is getting this many views per hour. They use some Reddit information here. Look here, Reddit upvotes. They obviously use Reddit. They got 15,000 Facebook likes, which means they used Facebook as a strategy. Again, you're in research mode. You're getting all the bits of information to help you with your video. And then as you go further down, you can see here, these are the tags that they used on this video. 
chocolate cake, chocolate cake, da 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 da, best chocolate cake. You could use this information yourself. Simply use the paper clip and click on copy tags to clipboard, and all these become yours. How cool is that? So we've learned number of views doesn't mean it's a good video, but views per hour tells me if it's a good video today. Historical, is it still working right now? Is it still a thing today? Is it still going up and to the right? Yes, it is. I'm going to start investigating this further. Remember, I haven't picked up my camera. And as I said, if it's the one thing you're gonna take away from today is do this research first. So many of us creators go out and rush out and we take our videos and we phones and we film and then we just wonder why we're not getting those views. This is critical to understand before you kind of take your camera and go. Now I'm focused. It's how to make amazing chocolate cake in a microwave, in a mug, in 10 minutes or less. That is my title. Now guess what I have to do? Film this in a microwave in 10 minutes or less. Done. I have done my research. I know enough people are going to be attracted to that. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to you guys and hopefully it's um, really resonating. I just don't want you to make the mistake of spending hours doing stuff that nobody is searching for. This autocomplete trick and understanding this infrastructure and the views per hour, that's where the big gold is. So I see a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of questions coming in through. So hopefully Rob is picking all of those up. Hopefully we're not missing anything. As we go to the next screen, this is pretty important. Now, this is your upload screen, right? In your upload screen, this is where you're gonna tell YouTube about the video that you've just made. Mm. Excuse me. So, what's the most important line? It's this line, it's your title line. Now remember, YouTube is a search engine. Search engine works based on understanding the content. So feed the beast. Give YouTube the information it needs. Give it the keywords that it's looking for. So when somebody does a search, how to make custom thumbnails, YouTube says, oh, I've got a perfect video for you. How to make custom thumbnails. Bang, and it marries the two together. So Rob's done an amazing job here. As always, how to make custom thumbnails. Look at the first line of the description. How to make custom thumbnails. Look at the first tag. How to make custom thumbnails. So we've told YouTube three different times this is what this video is all about. And that is where the power of video comes into play. Now, if you go into the keywords and you start typing, let's let's take another example. Let's type, let's go for Mother's, Mother's Day. Can you see as I am typing, let me bring it up a little bit. Mother's Day, as I'm typing, it already starts to list what's ranking, what's working, what are the highest scoring numbers that I should be going after. Let's just go for Mother's Day, and I'm gonna show you this, look at this. Click on Mother's Day, and it opens up your keywords, um, it opens up your keywords, your, key, your related keywords. In other words, if I was making a Mother's Day video, Mother's Day, mother, late night, mom, blah, 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 blah. Here are all the keywords that are related to this, but check how cool this is. Last 30 days, it's telling me there was a massive spike, and now it's pretty much dead. Would you be making a Mother's Day video today if you did this research? Probably not. Why not? Well, because nobody's searching for this now. Mother's Day is done and dusted. We're over that. But is this a good video to make? Or should you just abandon Mother's Day altogether? Aha. Here is where the second part comes in. Don't just look at the last 30 days. Look at all times. And look what all times exposes. It exposes spikes. Look at this. Spike, 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 spike. Every year, Mother's Day spikes up. What does that mean? It's a tentpole event. Can you know for sure that in 2020, Mother's Day will spike up? You've got a pretty good idea that's going to. If it's spiked up every single year since 2008, odds are pretty good that in 2020, Mother's Day will be a thing. So if you didn't make a Mother's Day video this year, make sure it's on your roadmap for next year. And of course, remember, it's not just Mother's Day. It's Easter, Father's Day, Christmas, New Year's, Independence Day, Memorial Day, all those holidays. And don't just think US. Think about your local country. What are you celebrating? Maybe there was in South Africa, there was elections recently. Um, is that going to be a tentpole event? Well, no. But is that a good topic to search? I don't know. This is what you do, why you do your research. Um, 
things like uh, that are specific, like the Chinese New Year. is That's a brilliant one. And that's going to be every year. So you see how you use this information to localize it to your environment. Think, of course, US and, of course, um, kind of the big picture. But remember, you've got a local community that you want to serve as well. What else is happening locally? So you do this research. Keyword in here, related keywords in there, and then you go look at the trend. Is, is it still happening right now? Well, Mother's Day is pretty much on its way out. Should we just for fun, let's just try Father's Day. I think that should be coming up in June, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, any information there? Yeah, still not enough. For, oh, okay, hold on. Maybe it helps if you spell it correctly. Let's see if anything comes up on that. There we go. Aha, okay, so look at this activity. If, you're not, if you don't have a Father's Day video, I would be getting onto that. Let's look at all times. Is Father's Day a tentpole event? Yes, it is. So we know it's going to start spiking. Look at those dates. Go look at this graph. See how it's doing this, which means search volume is starting to pick up. Should you be making a Father's Day video? If it fits your channel, absolutely it's something that you should be looking at. So you can see here some derivatives of this um, Father's Day, Father's Day song, fa Happy Father's Day, Father's Day card, etc. Start thinking bigger than what's my next video? What's my next video? This is where the research is gold. Okay, I think we've spoken enough about that. Let's get rid of this. Now, on here, a couple of other things to note. Remember we said YouTube is a search engine. I told you I'll repeat that a couple of times. So, how to make custom thumbnails. How to make custom thumbnails. How to make custom thumbnails. But scroll further down. Guess what? Videos to gain views from is here as well. What does that mean? Well, YouTube knows that we don't watch one video and then we go and make a buying decision. Nobody's ever watched, well, not nobody, but most of us don't watch one chocolate cake video and then we just rush out and do it. We're gonna watch two, three, four, five videos before we find the one that we like and then we'll follow that recipe. Or if it's about a gadget, we're gonna follow, we're gonna look at three or four or five different reviews before we make a decision. YouTube knows that. So we're saying to YouTube, hey YouTube, this video is all about custom thumbnail. We wanna force a relationship between our video and somebody else's video who's talking about the same topic. So here we go, videos to gain views from, and look at this, YouTube has actually recognized that we make pretty good videos about custom thumbnails. These are the tags that we've used. We've used the same tags in here. Therefore, we're saying to, to YouTube, hey YouTube, when somebody finishes watching this video, perhaps suggest them this video because it's on the same topic. And you can go down, you can see even more people talking about custom thumbnails. What kind of tag, um, tag are they using? Are we using the same tags? Because anytime you can force a relationship between your video and somebody else's video, you're trying to get that, hey, you've liked this, now maybe try watch this. As we move on, here is something that's very, very important and critical, I would say. When you launch a video, YouTube is looking for a bunch of signals. YouTube wants to know, is this a good video or a bad video? How does it know that? Well, when you launch a video, if a lot of people are watching that video immediately, if they're staying on your video for a long time, if they're commenting, giving you thumbs up, sharing that video, all of those are golden nuggets amongst lots of other signals to YouTube to say, hey, this is a good video. I'm gonna start suggesting it to other people. So we have a tool called best time to publish on your channel. In other words, if I know that on my channel, on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, what's the Wednesday? On a Wednesday, if I'm gonna upload a new video today, I know that between 12 and two is roughly when people are on my channel, my subscribers are on my channel, I've got activity on my channel. If I launch a video when people are there, the odds of them watching it are much higher than if they're driving away from their computer, it's midnight for them. So I'm launching at the best possible time launch the best possible time, it gives you the best advantage of being able to be seen quickly and then hopefully get that initial velocity, that initial momentum. Remember we spoke about views per hour? You want those views right at the beginning if possible because that's what's gonna give you those strong signals to YouTube and push it. So this is such a cool, powerful tool. You should absolutely be checking, checking that out. If you scroll further down, here's a whole bunch of checklists that we have for you. 
make sure it's part of you've got at least one card at least one end screen you've added it to a playlist all of these are just signals to youtube that this is a good video so we just want to make sure that you are on track with that so summarizing this page thumbnails uh, uh, titles titles are the most important that's where youtube places a lot of value make sure your keywords are in your titles make sure your keywords are in your description youtube wants to understand feed the beast give them as much tags as you can as you can about this title are they as important as they used to be no but together as a whole if you can feed the beast and tell this is what my video is about more likelihood that youtube is going to start understanding and then of course post it at the time when your people are online okay so i just want to make sure i haven't lost people with all my jabba 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 rant 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 i'm gonna have a drink of water just give the uh, give us some thumbs up in the in the chat just to make sure that i can see the things are, that you guys are with me i haven't lost you and if you're still here with us that's that, that's great just one second mm. okay um as we wait for those because again remember there's a bit of a delay between the chats and me seeing you so i just want to make sure um right black sweat mk135 thanks for sharing great i'm glad you guys are here um foodie ants amazing tool yes it is if you haven't used the tool if you don't have vidiq now in the description of this video is a 30-day trial give it a bash everything that i'm talking about here is unlocked you can see all of this information and take a month to just up your channel just go through your channel like i'm doing now and really start to optimize that that is absolutely super super important um right let's move on okay so we'll get um julian curry's thumbs up um kim Fa oh lots of thumbs up shadow spark gaming um <laughs> royal and what royal bad boy thumbs up lots of thumbs up okay cool you guys are rocking we're on track can we carry on let's do that um if you're giving it a thumb oh, rob has this amazing technique watch this this is quite cool this is you this is we trying this out we're gonna have this awkward moment of silence and during this moment of silence give a thumbs up to this video okay ready one two three Okay, I don't know if you guys did it or not, but it was fun doing it. Anyway, okay, let's move on. So on the left-hand side, we have something called competitors. Now, why is competitors important? Competitors aren't you versus that channel. Don't make that mistake. On YouTube, we have other people doing similar content to what we do. And we want to keep an eye on what they're doing so that we know if we're on the right track. Because again, remember, YouTube watches what we're up to, watches which video we watch, and he wants to suggest other videos doing the same thing. I don't think I refreshed, which is my bad. Hold on, let me just go to this and just go to that. And I should have refreshed, but I didn't. Let's see if that one works. Um, the nice thing about YouTube is the lovely times they're making changes to, use, uh, to the new studio beta. So things are being migrated from the one to the other. So our developers are always on standby when something is changing. So here are the competitors and look at these guys. These are great people. We work with them all the time and I want to see what they're up to. What kind of content are they making? Maybe if you're in gaming and people are starting to talk about, um, you know, when the new Pokemon game that's just been announced, the plus plus, who knows why they came up with that name. My daughter loved that. If they're starting to talk about that and you're not, well, maybe you should. If people are starting to talk about um, the latest keto trend and you're not talking about it, well, maybe you should. Okay, so this is why this is really, really important to understand what other people are talking about. What's their thumbnail like? What's their title like? Are they big, small? Are they uh, using eyes? Are they using lots of colors? Brian G. Johnson loves his green. And look how nice that pops. Maybe I need to kind of give a think about how I do my thumbnails. Things like that, we're learning from each other. So it's, don't think of competitors as one versus one. It's more of who else is doing similar content. But remember, here's where the gold is. I don't care about number of views that they got. I care about how many views per hour they're getting. So that is to me showing me that people are interested in this content. People are interested in what's, what they're showing. Therefore, I need to be interested. Am I missing a trend? So you can add as many competitors as you need to based on your program that you have. And the next one I want to show you, speaking of trends, is something called trend alerts. Now, 
Trend alerts are very, very underutilized. Trend alerts are how you get ahead of those trends. We've all seen those challenges. We've all seen those trends which have happened on YouTube. And we, unfortunately, most of us only get into those trends right at the very end. But if you had a trend alert, perhaps you can get it at the beginning. Here's what I mean by that. So you give your trend, uh, your trend alert a name. Let's use something like a big keywords like Fortnite. Did I spell that right? I did not. Um, Fortnite. Let's give it a Fortnite, right? That's the big keyword. We can say, look, Mr. Agent, I want you to go out onto YouTube and every time there's a video from anyone, not just my competitors, from anybody who gets more than a thousand views per hour, each week send me this report. Okay, why is that important? Because if you see a video that was a thousand views per hour today, and next time you got that report, that video is on 5,000 views per hour, guess what's happening? It's spiking up. Something has changed. Something is going on on that category, on that keyword, which you need to go investigate. So it can be nice and broad like Fortnite, or it can be very, very niche specifically to your industry. Microwave cooking, as an example. If you see a video going from 100 views to 500 views per hour, something is happening. Maybe it's a new microwave that automatically cooks and does your grocery shopping. I don't know. But you can investigate that right at the beginning. There's no point in you waiting until everybody has made videos about this and then now you're coming late to this party. This is such a beautiful tool. You need to be using this. Imagine getting an email report that says, hey, this is the content that's working. Go and make content that looks like this. How cool is that? So that is the trend alerts. As we move over to something called most viewed. Now, most viewed comes with a warning. I always like to tell you because most viewed is everything that's going on on YouTube now, but sorted by views per hour. In other words, what's working versus what isn't working. However, here's where we pray that the YouTube is really kind of filtering out all the bad content. I always like to have a quick look to make sure it's all legit and kosher out here. Yes, it is. Look at this video. Kids videos, in music videos, movie trailers are always at the top. This video is getting 631,000 views per hour. How insane is that? Kids videos, kids videos, kids videos. Look at that. That's an industry, an entire industry. If you're in the kids game, if you have a kids channel, you have a kids focus, this is where you should be because this is the kind of stuff that is working. And if you can make similar content to this, you're going to win. You're going to win big. Now, for some of you are thinking, okay, look, uh, this channel has got 3.5 million subscribers. This video has got 15.4 million views. Uh, I know it's getting 631,000 views per hour, but my channel is so small it doesn't even compete. No problem, and I fully understand that. Go down to the bottom. You've got something called channel subs. Instead of saying all, I want to say cool. Show me only channels between 10,000 and 100,000. Let's see what that looks like. What kind of content is currently been making and working around this channel? So again, kid stuff, music stuff, as we said, okay? And now you can start kind of seeing what's working within your channel size. And of course, you can kind of sort it by categories. You can filter down by countries, by search terms. So kind of really spend time here understanding this. I will say, don't spend too much time on this. This is just a nice, uh, quick overview. What's going on? What's working? What's weird on YouTube? Can I do something like this on my channel? Uh, yeah, not really. Great, next. Or yes, I can. Fine, then maybe try adapt something towards your channel. But this is amazing to see what works on YouTube because you got the views per hour. And that is where the gold is. I don't want to go to the trending page. That's irrelevant. I want to know what's working by views per hour. Okay. Next up, so competitors, trend alerts, most viewed. The next up is channel audit. This is where we spoke about the second D, are you delivering? This is where this just tells you whether you are or you are not. And the first thing you're gonna see on the top, it's gonna give you a month by month comparison. What's going on with our channel? Now we've had 
some insane views on our channel some because of specific tests that we were running and specific data that we were analyzing so month over month you can see the things are looking down do we panic no we know there was a reason so we're fine with this but here's where i want you to focus on this content to double down on content to double down on is basically what's working on your channel so on our particular channel what's giving us views per hour what's giving us good engagement what's giving us views and what's giving us subscribers so i'm looking to see what's working these videos are doing really well these videos are giving me subscribers we're a how-to channel are all our how-to videos ranking here yes they are which means you guys are enjoying that kind of content what does that mean for us uh make more of that content if we make more of that content that you guys like you're going to keep watching and you're going to keep subscribing it's a win-win situation so on your channel what is your audience telling you about your channel are you making content they actually want to see is it giving you good watch time average watch time top retention go and analyze and see what's working this is non-emotional i know you loved content a but your audience didn't really like it if it, they did it will be at the top because if it didn't it will be down here content that could use work what does that mean it means the audience didn't really connect with this content the audience didn't really love wholeheartedly what you did do you destroy it no you learn from it what was working why didn't it work is maybe it's too short maybe it's too long maybe i used the wrong timing maybe it was the wrong image i start to understand so that i can make more of the content that does work other cool things um, top search terms. What do people search to get to our channel? Engagement rates, um, engagement click rates, card click rates. Look at this. Every time we do a poll, 79%, it always right at the top. Other stuff is at the bottom. What does that mean? Make more polls. What is it going to mean on your channel? Same thing. If you see something really, really working, just make more of it. So it's very, very cool to understand the search terms and understand what is working. This is why I love this tool. This is what you pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for, for people to sit and analyze your channel. Now you simply push a button and but uh, there it is. Okay. As you scroll further down, metrics over the last 30 days. But look at this, items to improve upon. Immediately, I got two red items. I got four videos, which are currently not in a playlist. And I got videos without any end screen. Uh -oh, these are bad things. I need to go fix it. I could click on it open that video and simply add it to a playlist or add the end screen but instantly i can see this another cool thing to have a look at on this is the time frame over the last 90 days don't just look at 30 days look at a 90 days why is that because in the 90 days you have highs and you've got lows so 90 days is going to smooth all those out and then it's going to kind of give you a true reflection of your channel so always look at 30 days and then look at 90 days 30 days 90 days to get you a really nice idea of your channel so as much as you love making chocolate cake if every time you make those videos it's always on the items to improve upon it at the bottom but every time you do barbecue recipes they're always at the top what does your community want from you more barbecue stuff less chocolatey cake stuff so perhaps you should kind of look at that and look at that as, an, as your option go and live in this page this is where the gold is this is amazing amazing amount of information you can actually get from this this changes the game this is how you change your channel if you give your subscribers what they want they will keep coming back because that's why they're there so on that final on that note if we move on to something so we've spoken about competitors we, we spoke about the research we spoke about understanding what's happening on YouTube. The second D is about are you delivering? And then now the third D is distribution. What distribution is, it's I've done the work. This is where you reward yourself. These are your achievements. So we've reached 300,000 subscribers on March the 22nd. And now we're very proud of that. And in which case we click on it. It opens up a certificate and I can share that on social media this is a brilliant brilliant growth strategy you can do this on your channel obviously it will customize the achievements based on your own channel obviously it's going to not going to wait till you get a million comments it's going to do something based on your demographics where you live how your channel's operated how many subscribers you've got it's everything is customized why i say this is a great growth strategy 
is because on those, you're able to share them with your community. What does your community love? Being part of your journey. So when you say, hey guys, thanks very much. Because of you, I've managed to reach 500 subscribers. I'm very proud. Thanks for making it happen. They're going to retweet that. They're going to thumbs up it. They're going to share it on their social because they're part of your journey. And that is how other people say, hey, congratulations, well done. Somebody else sees it, goes, oh, what's this all about? They click, they see your channel, and then maybe you have another subscriber. Maybe you've got some more views. So share your achievement. Don't forget to tag us at vidIQ if you're doing it. We love to retweet that to give you more of that exposure. So as soon as you reach those milestones, share it with everyone. Use that certificate. Let the world know that, that, you, that you're here. So based on all that, um, a couple of things to take away from today. Number one, do your research. Do the autocomplete. Stick it in the keywords in. Do the autocomplete. Understand what people are searching for because that's going to marry up search with your video. Don't forget to do the alphabet walkthrough, A, B, C, D, blah, blah, blah. And then go to the beginning and type the what, where, when, which, how, why, and who. See if those are giving you good titles. Now you are laser, laser focused. Go and title your videos correctly with keywords, description, tags. You make sure you feed the beast as much as possible. Know when to publish. Know if it's a 10 poll event. Does it happen every year? Is it happening now? What's the trend on its way down, on its way out? Do that research so that you're ready to rock and roll. So when you put something out, you're going to publish it at the right day, at the right time when your people are online. That is how you get the best push out of the gate when you launch your, your new videos. Keep an eye on your competitors. Don't treat them as competitors, not one versus one. Don't copy what they're doing because everybody's unique. Make it your own content. Keep your eye on what they're doing. Can you learn from it? Are there any trends? What's your trend alerts telling you? Are things really happening in your industry? Keep your eye on that. Can you make videos based on that? What's going on on YouTube? Keep an eye. Again, don't spend too much time. Don't try to overanalyze it, but just kind of see what's working. Could you do something along the same lines? And then live in channel audits. What is working? What is working on your channel? What isn't working? Great. Stop making the stuff that isn't working. Make more of the stuff that is working. And then very short, very soon, you'll be able to reach those milestones and start to share it. So hopefully that was useful. Um, hopefully you guys got a lot of it. I see the questions have been running up and down here in the live chat. Um, hopefully Rob has managed to answer all of those. If he hasn't, don't forget we're doing a live Q&A tomorrow as a live stream on the channel. So of course, you've got to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to vidIQ. Don't know why you wouldn't be by now. <laughs> of course you want to be. Um, give the video the thumbs up because if you enjoyed this kind of training and this kind of content, we'd love to kind of hear from you guys. Um, if you're into, into podcasts, don't forget vidIQ.com forward slash tube talk, T U B E T A L K. Go and listen to those interviews, really more information. Lots on our blog as well, vidIQ.com forward slash blog, and lots and lots of good content. So you can hear it, you can watch it, you can read it. We're here to help you guys grow. That is what vidIQ is all about. And again, if you haven't tried vidIQ, no obligation, 30 day free trial, just go and download it and really kind of get to grips, spend a month really understanding your channel. You'll see what it, it takes away all the haze, it takes away all the what happens if, and it takes away all that uncertainty because now you know the stuff that you really need to be laser focused on. And you do one thing and you get better at that one thing and better at that one thing. And then you master the next and the next and the next. It's those baby building blocks that are going to really make the massive difference in your YouTube career. Sure. Okay, this has been, the weather has held out. This has been good. We didn't go offline, which is great. I really appreciate you guys hanging out, spending some time with us. And hopefully we'll see you on tomorrow's live stream or on Tuesday's live stream when we do the audit. Or if you feel free to come back next week, same time, same place, we'll be doing more of this. My name is Liron Sega. Feel free to reach out and we'll see you guys online. Cheers for now.